Hi everybody, welcome to K-2 Storytime, really elementary school storytime. You, anybody could watch this. Um, when I was in elementary school, I was introduced to a whole new part of the library and that was the biography section. I gobbled those books up. And I remember when my elementary school librarian, Mrs. Bean, had read a Snowflake Bentley, it was like my eyes opened to a whole new world. I love learning about other people's lives. So I decided to take that love and give it back to all of you. Um, because at that same time, I was watching TV shows like The Proud Family and That's So Raven. And they had these episodes where they introduced me to people I didn't learn about in elementary school, like um, Scott Joplin, who started ragtime music, or Garrett Morgan, who invented the stoplight and the gas mask. I just never had heard these names before, but I heard them on these TV shows that I loved. And so I am very, very excited to tell you that there are tons of picture book biographies all about Black Americans that are just coming out in droves. They're just amazing books. And so we're going to read one today that's called Whoosh. And it's um, called, and the subtitle is, which is like the second title in a book, Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Inventions and it's written by Chris Barton and illustrated by Dawn Tate. And this book um, is all about Lonnie Johnson who invented the Super Soaker, which is a water gun. That's pretty cool. Did you know who Lonnie Johnson was? If you did, that's awesome. I didn't know who he was until I watched those TV shows when I was younger. And now there's a picture book about him. So let's read it, shall we? Let's learn all about Lonnie Johnson. Okay. Every day brought a challenge for young Lonnie Johnson. The challenge of finding space for his stuff. Six Johnson kids were squeezed into their parents' small house in Mobile, Alabama. Lonnie would have loved a workshop of his own, but there just wasn't room. There was nowhere to keep his rocket kits or his bamboo shooters or his rubber band guns or his erector set or his go-kart engine bolts and screws and other spare parts his dad let him bring in from the shed and various other things he'd hauled from the junkyard. Lonnie loved building and creating. Ideas for inventions just kept on flowing. He learned how to make rockets from scratch. Kids at school gathered to watch Lonnie Lon <laughs> This is a tough one. Kids at school gathered to watch Lonnie launch them. And he learned how to make rocket fuel. When it caught fire in the kitchen, Lonnie's mom didn't make him stop. She sent him to work outside. Lonnie wanted to spend his life designing things, building things, and getting them to work. He wanted to be an engineer. Lonnie took an exam that said he would not make a very good one. His dream had been challenged. Lonnie was discouraged, but he knew that whoever had graded this test hadn't met Linux. You can see Linux in the background. Let's meet Linux. Inspired by a TV show, Lonnie had built his very own robot. <gasps> he made it out of scrap metal and he named it Linux. Compressed air cylinders and valves allowed Linux's body to turn and its arms to move. The switches came from an old broken jukebox. Lonnie used a tape recorder to program Linux and as a bonus, the reels, these things, look like eyes. <gasps> Lonnie wanted to enter his creation in a science fair, but he couldn't get the transmitter to work. Without it, Lonnie couldn't send commands to Linux. Science fairs came and went. Lonnie missed one and then another until he got an idea. Now, Lonnie may, or may not have asked before he borrowed his little sister's walkie-talkie. Do you think he asked? I don't think he did. But it fixed the transmission issue. His school's team took freshly finished Linux to a 1968 science fair at the University of Alabama, where only five years earlier, African-American students hadn't been allowed. Having to compete in a place that still wasn't very welcoming, now that was a challenge with a capital C. Against other schools from all over the state, Lonnie's team won first place. I mean, Linux won first place too. Soon Lonnie left home to go to college at Tuskegee Institute, where he stood out as a self-confident, insightful, creative thinker. 
He stood out as a student who asked the right questions, precisely defined problems, and formulated solutions. And he stood out as the guy who built his own booming sound system out of cast off electronics. It even had lights that flashed with the beats. <laughs> Lonnie sometimes studied right into the middle of his own parties. The extra studying paid off. He became an engineer after graduation, and that took him beyond Alabama, way beyond. When NASA was sending an orbiter and probe called Galileo to Jupiter, the space agency needed to ensure a constant supply of power to the orbiter's computer memory. The engineer who had to figure out how to do it was Lonnie. His challenge was to come up with a lightweight backup system able to keep essential functions going in case the main power was lost. It wasn't easy, it wasn't obvious, but Lonnie found a solution. Some at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory doubted his idea would ever work. Lonnie convinced them it would. And he was right! As it photographed Jupiter and its moons, Galileo was supported by the power package that Lonnie designed. Much of what we know about Jupiter could have been at risk in a power failure, fa failure if not for Lonnie. Lonnie l let us learn more about Jupiter. Ideas for other problems to solve just kept on flowing. They flowed whether Lonnie was working with hundreds of people at NASA or up at night tinkering with his own inventions in, finally, his own workshop. Lonnie knew that the world's millions of refrigerators and air conditioners need a new, a new cooling system, one that didn't use R12, a chemical that was bad for the environment. He had an idea for using water and air pressure instead. To test his idea, he made a pump and nozzle, connected them to the bathroom faucet, turned on the faucet, turned on the pump, and then, do you see where this is going? Do you remember what he invented, what we talked about? Whoosh! The stream that blasted across the bathroom was so powerful. It created a curtain swirling breeze. It also gave Lonnie an idea for yet another invention. Whoosh. This, he thought, would make a great water gun. First, he had to find or make the parts, including a pump small enough for a child to handle. Then he had to glue the parts together in a prototype, which is an early version with room for improvement. Finally, Lonnie tested his strange looking squirt gun at a picnic. Does it really work? A man asked. Sure, Lonnie said. Wanna see? Lonnie worked at the pump, which squeezed air into a chamber. When he pulled the trigger, the air escaped, forcing water out with a <gasps> whoosh. <laughs> For a water battle to be a fair fight, there couldn't just be one of Lonnie's water guns. He needed help making more. So he went to a toy company, and then another toy company, and then another toy company. The word no flowed again and again, but finally one company said, Yes, it planned to make his water gun. Lonnie also had other projects, a water propelled toy airplane, two kinds of engines, and his cooling system. He'd found investors to provide the money for turning his ideas into products people could buy. He made a leap of faith, quit his day job, and devoted himself to full-time inventing. But soon, each plan fell apart, even the one for the water gun. These things sometimes happen. There's Lonnie moving out. But when they happen, one after another to the same person, well, that's some pretty bad luck. Lonnie didn't have a job. He didn't have the money he'd been counting on. He and his family had to move out of their home and into a little apartment. He was angry and scared. But Lonnie had dealt with challenges all his life. He knew a lot about solving prob problems and he still believed in his inventions, especially the water gun. Lonnie went looking for another toy company. In 1989, he found a toy maker who was interested in seeing the water gun if Lonnie ever happened to be in Philadelphia. But don't make a special trip, the guy said. Lonnie made the special trip. In his wife's suitcase, he carried a new prototype. He unpacked it, filled the tank with water, pumped the gun until the air pressure was good and high, and what do you think happened? Whoosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Those people look so happy. K 
kids everywhere agreed with that wow. Lonnie's water gun, called the Super Soaker, became a smash hit. In no time, there were Super Soakers in backyards and on beaches and parks and on playgrounds. Each sale of a Super Soaker put a little money into Lonnie's pocket. All those hours, all those years that Lonnie spent in his workshop had paid off big time. Now he could afford to do just about anything he wanted. So what did Lonnie do? He got a bigger workshop, which is where you'll find him today. Because facing challenges, solving problems, and building things are what Lonnie Johnson loves to do. And his ideas just keep on flowing. The end. Good job. So that was all about Lonnie Johnson, the creator of the Super Soaker. I'm going to tell you about some more biographies that we have in the library. How about that? So let's look at some other biographies that are available at the library right now. They, I'm going to show you. So the first one is Schomburg, The Man Who Built a Library, and it's written by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Eric Velasquez. And Arturo Schomburg spent years collecting books, letters, music, and more from Black people during or before the Harlem Renaissance. And he worked with the New York Public Library to create an entire collection of these things. And it is now called the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. Next up is Bill Pickett. And this book is Bill Pickett, Rodeo Riding Cowboy, written by Andrea D. Pinckney and illustrated by Brian Pinckney. And Bill Pickett was a cowboy and a rodeo performer who perfected a rodeo performance called bulldogging, which is when you wrestle a steer to the ground by using its horns. I think I got that right from the book. And he was world famous and even appeared in early movies in the 1900s. Next up is Melba Doretta Liston. And this book is Little Melba and Her Big Trombone by Katherine Russell Brown and illustrated by Frank Morrison. And Melba Doretta Liston was the first woman of any race to become a world-renowned trombone player. She played the trombone. She played with Billie Holiday and Quincy Jones, and she eventually worked with composer Randy Weston to arrange music. And she was a very, very important part of the big band and jazz movements of the 1940s and 1950s. The next is Louis Michaud. And he started a black bookstore in the Harlem in Harlem in the 1930s that sold books by and about black people. Um, people like Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X and Langston Hughes visited this bookstore. And this book is The Book Itch, Freedom, Truth, and Harlem's Greatest Bookstore by Vonda Michaud Nelson and illustrated by R. Gregory Christie. Next up is Mae Jemison. Mae Jemison was the first black woman to go to space in 1992, so it's pretty recent. And she worked for NASA for many years before leaving and starting her own company and becoming a professor. And so this book is May Among the Stars, written by Rhoda Ahmed and illustrated by Stasia Burrington. Next up is August Wilson. August Wilson was a playwright who dropped out of high school and because of the discrimination that he faced. But he became an autodidact, which means he taught himself by reading books. So he read so many books at the public library where he grew up and um, he went on to win the biggest award you can win in writing twice. He won it twice. Oh, and this book is Feed Your Mind, um, a story of August Wilson by Jen Bryant and illustrated by Canada Chapman. Next up is Fannie Lou Hamer. Fannie Lou Hamer was an important person in the civil rights movement. If you've heard about Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks, you should probably hear about Fannie Lou Hamer. She fought for voting rights for black women and for representation of black people in the United States government. And this book is The Voice of Freedom, Fannie Lou Hamer, Spirit of the Civil Rights Movement by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Equa Holmes. Next we have Garrett Morgan, who I mentioned at the beginning. Garrett Morgan invented the traffic light and the gas mask. He was also ran for city council. He opened up a sewing machine repair shop, owned a poultry business, and started a newspaper. He was a very, very busy man, and he also fought for civil rights during the 1920s and the 1930s. And this book is Garrett Morgan, Inventor of the Traffic Light and Gas Mask by Patricia J. Murphy. Next up, we have 
Phyllis Wheatley. Phyllis Wheatley was a slave during the American Revolution in the United States, and she learned to read and, read and write, which was not allowed back then. And she published an entire book of poetry at the time, which was absolutely unheard of. And it was just monumental. And she was invited to meet the King of England at the time, and she, but she had to turn back for reasons if you read this book. And she met George Washington twice. Her book of poetry had a very long lasting effect on literature. And this book is A Voice of Her Own, the story of Phyllis Wheatley, slave poet by Catherine Lasky and illustrated by Paul Lee. And we have Mary Walker. Mary Walker was born into slavery and after she was freed, she lived an entire life having kids, getting married and just learning and growing. But she didn't, she didn't learn to read until she was 116 years old. My goodness. And that's amazing. And she lived to be 121. So this is the oldest student, how Mary Walker learned to read, written by Rita Lorraine Hubbard and illustrated by Oge Mora. So we have tons more biographies. If you ever come in, I can recommend more or any of, any of your other favorite children's librarians can recommend more. I love biographies. I love learning about other people, people that you might not learn in, about in school. And you can see into different worlds and see into different times. And that one makes them so great. So I hope that you check out these books. I hope that you learned something when we read about Lonnie Johnson. And I hope to see you soon. <laughs> All right, bye.